Okay, the fifth posture, if I'm not mistaken, Parvatasana. Parvatasana, the mountain posture, is, um, is beautiful. Um, it's one of my favorites, to be honest. It's really a rest, oh, sorry, excuse me, give me a moment. My um, computer's plugged in and you know it's magnetic. And so my cat walked by and just kind of brushed it and it, the uh, plug fell out. Um, so in Parvatasana, it gives us, a, gives us a, a chance to rest when we're doing Surya Namaskar, believe it or not. I know you're on your hands and on your, on your soles of your feet, but if you do it properly, meaning if the weight is distributed the way it needs to be distributed, if the arms are in the right position, it's a very nice resting posture. Um, but it's also a very effective posture. So let me explain it to you. Like, let me explain a little bit about the posture and then I'll, I'll go ahead and show you. Um, but with Parvatasana, I want you to understand that this is the focal point, your Vishuddhi Chakra. This point right here, where the thyroid is. When we're going down onto our hands and our um, feet, I want you to concentrate on bringing the chin to the chest. We're putting pressure on the thyroid when we're doing that, okay? And we're putting pressure on that chakra, that whole area. We're activating, we're massaging, whatever you wanna call it. But what we're doing is letting the focus be there. And in keeping the focus there, you're activating that area. It, whether you have hypo or hyperthyroidism, it'll help either way. Um, it's very good for the endocrine system because the thyroid is part of the endocrine system. It's a, it's a very, all the parts of the endocrine system are important, but the thyroid itself is such an important part of the coordination of the hormones and of the, of the absorption of calcium or any you know, all, all these things that, that are so important to this body, this posture addresses through putting the pressure on the thyroid. Now, the other part of it is there's a beautiful stretch, a beautiful stretch in the spine, beautiful stretch through the backs of the legs and the Achilles heel beautiful stretch in the neck, um, strengthening of the arms. There's just a lot that this posture does, like all of them. All of them are really beautiful postures. But this one seems very simple. Oh yes, I'm on my hands on my, and my feet. No, no, no. We, what we're doing here is coordinating a resting position in which the body comes into this beautiful balance. And we're actively helping the body to do that by pressing the chin to the chest, okay? So think of it in terms of trying to look at your belly button when you're down or at your knees when you're down. And that'll keep that chin down toward the chest, okay? Normally, I don't want you to necessarily put your chin down because you're kind of restricting your, your, um, your breathing when you're doing that. So the breath is gonna be shallow. But in this case, I'm asking you to do that, okay? The position calls for it. Um, if at any time you feel lightheaded, please back out immediately, but slowly. If you have high blood pressure, you have to be, be very careful, okay? I, um, I suggest that you get into the posture, maybe tap the thyroid and bring the head up a little bit. Try not to keep the head down for a long time. In any of these positions that are inverted, you have to be very careful if you have high blood pressure. Um, it's important that you be mindful of that, okay? And especially when we're doing Surya Namaskar or the sun salutation in a slow manner, we're holding the positions for a long time. And so you have to be careful. So I'll show you how to modify it so that you can alleviate that pressure on, on the head or on the brain. <clears throat> Again, I've said it before, there'll come a point if you practice Surya Namaskar, if you do this same series of, of asanas, there may come a point where you'll go to the doctor and he'll say, oh my gosh, your blood pressure is actually low. We need to take you off medication. But until that point, until your doctor says your blood pressure has become normal, please be very careful, okay? It's essential that you check in with yourself. And again, if you become lightheaded, come out of the posture. Don't hold this posture for a long time. If 
you have high blood pressure. Go into it, rest, and then go into it again. But again, I'm going to ask you, and I'll show you, I'm going to ask you to raise your head a little bit rather than keeping it down the whole time. So any questions so far? Any questions on, on what I'm, we're discussing or what I'm, I guess, I'm, what I'm discussing? <laughs> um, no? Okay, let me show you. And then there may be some questions after. You'll be going into the posture a little differently when you're doing the sequence. But when you're doing it separately, now remember, I want you to do these postures separately, okay? To begin with, as we're practicing, I hope you've been practicing, and if you haven't, that's okay. But if you've been practicing, I want you to practice them separately. So what I mean, what do I mean by that? You do pranamasana, you stay in pranamasana, you get to know pranamasana, you understand how it feels when those fingers are touching, you understand the balance that's occurring. As it's, you, you, Many things happen in this very simple posture, but once you get to know it, you understand how powerful that subtle aspect of it is. And the same, Asta Uttanasa, same thing. This posture is beautiful. It, it, the benefits of it are amazing. But again, I want you to understand, go beyond the amazing to the subtle, okay? Go beyond what you're seeing physically to the subtle. And that's what happens when you practice it, when you isolate each posture and practice it and focus on just that. So um, in Paratasana, you won't be, if you have high blood pressure, you won't be able to stay in the posture for very long. But when you do, I ask that you really, really understand and, and focus on what's happening in the body. So we'll begin with being on our hands and knees, okay? I'm gonna ask you to bring your fingers forward a little bit. Normally I ask you to bring them under your shoulders. I want them to come forward just a little bit. Your toes will be tucked under. Just observe and then we'll do it together. <laughs> Let me tuck my shirt so you can see my, my belly. Okay. You're here in this position, you breathe in. As you're breathing out, you're going to go up on your toes, bring the heels down on the ground and bring the chin, <coughs> excuse me, the chin to your chest. Now I want you to observe, my head isn't here, my head is here, okay? So many times what we'll do is we'll go into this posture and this is what you're, you'll see. You'll see the head down, but the body is kind of like in a tabletop right, and it's stretched out tabletop. I want you to lean back into the heels. You'll feel that, you'll feel a stretch throughout the back of the knees. You lean back into the heels, and that shifts the weight back. Now, as far as the arms, I want you to release the tension in the shoulders, and then let the base be your hand. That's what's going to create the base, that's what's going to create the stability. The arms are there, sure, but the weight is on the back of the body and the base is actually your hand. Tuck the chin in. Belly will come in naturally. And then to come out of the posture, you come back down on your knees and come back onto your heels, okay? Now, if you have high blood pressure, this is what I'm talking about. So you're going to be in this position, right? You're up back. I want you to lean back in the same way I asked you to do before. Tuck your chin in and then bring your head up. So you're actually stretching the throat here rather than contracting and putting pressure. So then gently go back into it. So you're here, go back into it, and then bring it up. So you want to go through all the steps. So the steps are, you bring the weight back so that the weight is on the back part of your body, on the feet, on the legs, on the hips. The arms are here, but they're just basically to stabilize you. They're not carrying any weight, really. And then you tuck the chin in. Raise your head up, keep the head up, and stay there for a moment, a few moments, a few breaths, 
and then tuck the chin in. Now, if you're finding that even that doesn't feel right for you, okay? If you're finding that um, going into that position and staying there is a problem for you, then don't stay in it. Go into it and come out. And I want you to visualize it, okay? Go into it so that you can know what it feels like, then sit down and visualize it. Because it's really important that you understand that you have to be very, very careful. And I, I, I don't mean to harp so much on this, but it's, it's essential when we're practicing yoga that we're safe and that we're aware that yes, these are on the surface, very simple postures, but they have an effect on the body. And if your body is off kilter in, in, in any point, it can, it can push it in that direction, right? A little bit more than you want it to. So any questions, I'm going to put you on gallery just so we can talk for a minute and then we'll do this together. Any question? Priti, do you have a question? No. No? Okay. Anybody else? Mina? It's to be on an empty stomach, right? Of course, yeah. All these postures are on an empty stomach. The only posture that you do on a full stomach and is recommended after you eat is Vajrasana because it helps you with your digestion. Um, but other than that, no, all postures are on an empty stomach. Even meditation is better on an empty stomach because when you're digestion, digesting, that's where the energy is going, right? And you tend to feel sluggish. You tend to feel more tired. And uh, once you start meditating, you might want to fall asleep. <laughs> Um, so yeah, usually it's much better to do, not usually, it's always better to do on an empty stomach. Um, when you start twisting and you have a, a full belly, it's very uncomfortable and you can start cramping. There's many things that can start happening because you are forcing that part of the body into postures where there is no room for it. I end up sleeping every time I try to do meditation. Maybe it's because of the medicine I'm on that it just makes me fall asleep rather than keep awake. <laughs> well, you know, Mina, yeah. the best way to heal is, yeah. is through sleep. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you know, you start out awake, yeah, you got enough, now you fall asleep. It's okay. Just go with whatever comes, you know, uh, but don't stop meditating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's two minutes that you get, it's two minutes you didn't have before. And it depends. I've had one minute and I'm gone. <laughs> that's fine. That's amazing. But one minute every day is 30 minutes a month. <laughs> and that's how we have to look at it. It's cumulative. Okay. It really is. Meditation has a cumulative effect. It's not that one day. It's not the hour, amazing hour I had today. So that means I don't have to do it the rest of the month, right? <laughs> No, it's every day. Sometimes we consider it to be good. Sometimes we consider it to be bad. But here's the thing. Meditation, those days where we think we're having a bad meditation, those are the days where we've created the space for, for things to be released, for things to be worked through. You know, we, we tend to think that we understand this whole process, but we don't. And so in that, in that state of meditation where you're releasing that sense of control is when many times things can flow that otherwise don't flow, that we have constricted in our joints, that we have constricted in our digestive system, that we have constricted throughout the whole body. So we are not, you know, in your typical sense of what is meditation, you know, you need to reach a space of bliss and, and silence. Well, that's good, of course, but there's a process too that you go through. And, and there are times in our lives that that's what we need more than that state, of, or in, we need in order to be able to reach that state of silence. I hope that makes sense. And I, I'm sorry to deviate from our subject matter, but it's an important topic because it's in that meditation that we release a lot of what's stuck in the body and um, you'll be seeing it in the asanas. You know, your body will start becoming more, 
more supple, more um, receptive. Because many times we can't do an asana out of fear. Not because we can't do it, but because there's fear in doing that asana. So, um, yeah, I, I won't continue. Otherwise, we could be here for hours <laughs> talking about this. Okay, but any questions on Parvatasana? What I just did with, with the asana, and then we'll do it together, okay? Or is anybody, anybody have anything physical that prevents you from doing Parvatasana the way I just showed you? Besides high blood pressure. No? Okay. I have a bad back and okay. neck. And so my neck, I can't put my neck how you were showing it. And hi, I'm Danielle's sister, Pam. We've, I've been on a couple of times, but I've been wanting to come on with you. Now, well, welcome, Pam. It's nice to meet you. Okay, you. So, so is your problem in your neck? Or in yes, I just area? had it. Yes, I've just had ablations in my neck and may have to have it fused. So it's through my neck and down into my spine. So I have to, I couldn't, I tried to get myself up, like you said, but I couldn't do it. Okay, then don't do it. Okay. Okay. Um, can you get on your hands and knees? Yes. Can you tuck your chin on your hands and knees? Uh, no, because I can't put my chin forward. I can put my neck back, but I can't bring my chin, my chin down. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you to keep it neutral. Okay. Bring it up and back. Okay. Perfect. You'll Thank still, you. You'll still be focusing on this area just in a different way. Okay. 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 But don't go onto your, onto your feet and your, the palms of your hands, okay? because that's too much on that area. Just stay on the hands and knees. Okay, great. Thank you. I didn't mean to take away from your time. No, no, this is what, no, no, Pam. You know, this is why we're here. This is exactly what this class is designed for. For, you know, this, you are exactly, <laughs> this kind of question is why we're here. So no, no, take, take the time. That's okay, why. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's why I put it the way I put it so that we can talk about it. Anybody else? No? All righty, okay. So let me, I'm going to um, put it on speaker view, okay? So that we can, oh no, actually, well, I'll put it on speaker view so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put it on gallery view so I can see you, okay? So try to make it so that your camera um, shows you so that I can see you through your camera. So one more time, I just want you to watch what I'm doing and then we'll, we'll do it together and I'll take a look at you. So Pam, you're going to come on your hands and knees. I want you to relax, very relax. And then you're just going to raise the head. Okay, I don't want you to, to do any other movement in the body. Try to keep the back straight and just raise the head. Don't raise it too much. Raise it so that you feel it at the base of your throat, okay? But the rest of the body is kind of straight and still. And move everybody because it goes to whomever is moving. And I really want to show you what I'm doing. If you need to say something, please, um, please interrupt, unmute yourself, okay? All right, so here we go. So you're on your hands and knees, Pam. And this applies to anybody that has extremely high blood pressure and that you should not be going into an inverted into inverted posture at all, okay? So you're in this four-legged position, tops of your feet are on the ground, the rest of the body is, is engaged but relaxed, and then just the head goes up gently and slightly, enough so that you feel it here at the base of the throat. And then if once you, you're there for a few moments, a few breaths, then just straighten the head, relax the neck, and then you can bring it back again, okay? So you will be feeling, rather than pressure, you'll, you'll be feeling a pull here. But at the same time, it's a different kind of um, focus, but it's still the focus on this area. Okay, now for the rest of you, tuck your toes under, hands and feet are on the ground. Bring the hands forward just a little bit. You don't want them under your shoulders like, like I asked Pam to do. You want them to come forward a little bit, about a palm, further forward. <clears throat> Tuck the toes under. Go up on your toes. 
and take my glasses off. Go up on the toes and now bring the heels down. Shift your weight, make sure your weight is shifted toward your hips and your feet. Tuck the chin in, pressure on the thyroid. And stay here. If you have high blood pressure and this is not where you want to be, you can keep your head up, tuck it for a moment, and then you bring it back up, keeping the head up. Again, it just depends on, and you need you to gauge. Very important that you gauge yourself where you need to be, okay? Um, because unless I'm with you one to one, it's very difficult for me to um, tell you. But definitely, if you have high blood pressure, please be very, very careful. <clears throat> okay, pretty good job. Mina, good job. I know that you have your issues with the spine, so that's good. Danielle? Jeshri, move your weight toward the back. Back, so the legs remain in the same position, but you're going to move the weight Shift the weight toward the back and tuck your chin to your chest. Make sure your arms are, there you go. Can you feel the difference? When you pull, move the weight toward the back, you're gonna feel an extra pull behind your knees. And that's what you want. You want the extra pull behind the knees. I'm not so worried about the heels hit coming down on the ground. I mean, that'd be nice if they did. You have to be very care careful that you don't pull so that the heels have that extra pull. I know people that have strained and pulled that those um, tendons. So you have to be very careful, but I do want you to feel the pressure. Ashrat, good job. Tuck your chin in. Good, that's it. All righty, come back down onto your hands and knees. Come back onto hands and knees for a moment. Yeah, rest, bring your head up. And then I'll get back to you, Karen. Stay in the position you were in, Karen, because I, I can see you better from the side. Yeah. <clears throat> I just want you to rest for a moment. You have to be careful. This is a beautiful posture, but don't stay in it for more than like 30 seconds, okay? Um, it's good for your brain because the blood flows down. It's good for the spine. But again, please, please, I know I keep saying that, but I'm really concerned about your blood pressure, okay? So make sure if you don't have high blood pressure, it's all good. All righty. So breathe in, as you're breathing out, go up on your toes, lift the knees, there we go. And now bring the heels on the ground, good. Bring the heels back on the ground, good, okay. Karen, tuck your chin in, there, that's it. And what'll happen is as you're tucking the chin in, the weight will kind of transfer automatically. There we go, good job, that's it. Gail, let's see. Good job. Try to shift the weight more toward your hips and, and your feet. There. You feel the difference? Yeah? Okay. All righty. Cynthia, good job. Sandy, I didn't get to see you. And slowly and gently come back onto your knees. Breathe in. And we'll do it one more time, okay? Stay here for a moment. Just stay and have a couple breaths. Let the breath come to a fairly normal um, rate. And we'll do it again. So back onto your hands and knees. And lift the knees as you're breathing out, go up on your toes, and now bring the heels on the ground. Okay, tuck the chin in, chin, there we go, chin to your chest, pressure on the thyroid. That's it, Sandy. From, what I, from this vantage point, it looks like you're doing it right. Okay. Jeshri, move your weight back. Back toward, the, back toward the feet. You don't move the feet, move the weight. You just shift the weight. And now chin to your chest. Good, that's it, okay. All righty, slowly and gently, come back onto your knees. Bring your bottom back onto your heels. Uh -huh. Extend your arms overhead. 
onto the ground. You're gonna go down on the ground. So let me show you. You come out of the posture. You come, you're here, right? You're gonna come out of the posture onto your hands and knees. And then I want you to come back down onto the heels and arms in front of you. It's a nice stretch through the spine, through the arms. And then bring your hands next to your knee and use your arms to push yourself up. Okay, what do you think? Questions, comments, well, how did it go? Well, you, you answered my question uh, about putting the feet all the way down on the ground. Um, I'm not able to do that just yet. That feels too much of a stretch and I don't wanna hurt that area. Um, also, are the knees to be hip width? Yes. Or or together hip width okay whatever is comfortable some of us may need to have them hip width some people like to have the feet almost together if you can be balanced but i like hip width because you're aligned <laughs> hip width right you want to keep alignment you try to keep that alignment at all times okay? okay but but if you feel off kilter just open them up a little bit i did at first i mean that's what happened i felt they were too close together and i said this doesn't feel right so right. I adjusted. And that's what you have to do. You know, you, that's why I, I, you, I use very little hands on with people. I like to help them find their own sweet spot, you know, because we're all so different. And so it's important, like you did, you shift a little bit. Okay, now you feel centered. Now your base is safe. Now you can go into the posture. And don't bring the heels down if you don't feel good about it, because you, that you can, you can overstretch and really hurt yourself. Thank you. Good job on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty. did you have a question? Yes. Uh, my um, weight on my hand varied. You know, a few times I felt like I had less weight. And then uh, once I felt like I had more weight and I, I don't understand. I did the posture the same way, but it seems like it varied. I, I know I should not have a lot of weight on my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, well, your hands are your base. So you'll have less weight the more you shift the weight to the back, right? right. right. But the hands are the base. So depending upon, let me word this properly so that you understand it. And I don't mean that you wouldn't understand. I'm just trying to, so that I, I'm phrasing it properly to get the message across. Um, the more relaxed you are, mm -hmm. the less you're going to feel that pressure. Okay. Okay. The more stable the arms are, you want the arms to be straight, right? You want the back, it is engaged, but you want it to be relaxed. This is, believe it or not, a resting posture. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring in that sense of rest, right, into it. But you're right. There are times... And I, I know what you're talking about because it happens to me. There are times that even though I've shifted everything back, right. I've still caught a lot of weight here. What is up with that? I come out of the posture, come back in and it goes away. Okay. So um, just play with it. And you'll find that there will be those subtle things that you've done that either take that weight away or create the weight. Because on the surface, it all looks the same. But more subtly, um, you'll find that there's a, just a slight shift that you need to make, okay? Um, but I, and I totally understand what you're saying. And I, I'm not sure that I helped you with my answer. Yeah, you did. And I think the relaxation I, uh, point, I maybe I'm you know, want, uh, scared or you know, something like that, that probably is causing that stress and maybe putting you know, some more weight on it. I don't know. But I'll well, practice more and think about, you know, relax myself more, so. Right, I, I think what you wanna do as you're, once you're in the posture, breathe out and let that settle throughout, right? You just settle in, it'll make a difference. Okay. Okay, and if it doesn't, let's talk again. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, Gail.
It would help me if, um, if you could just describe like technically in the body, how what we're doing here is different than down dog. Down dog is a, it is the same thing? The same okay. thing, except the American word for it is down dog. And the Sanskrit mm -hmm. word is Parvatasana. Oh my goodness. Okay. So with down dog, I did never put my head down that way with the chin against the thyroid. It was more of a, you know, free yeah. flow. So this is different in that way. Well, it is in that, you know, different people teach things differently. I'm teaching it according to Swami Satyananda. This okay. is the way he, he has configured Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskar is very similar across the board, but there are just these little nuances, right? And he saw um, Surya Namaskar as a therapeutic um, ensemble of asanas that can help the body. And how does it help? What can you do as you're going through the body? And this would be one of them, right? Putting the pressure on the thyroid. Um, an Ashtang Namaskar, where um, we haven't done that one yet. Um, Hasta Uttanasana, when you're coming back, you know, it's, he doesn't want you leaning back. Like you'll see many people lean way, way back. No, he wants you just leaning enough so that you feel it at the sternum. Little details like that that create harmony and create a state of relaxation in the body because his, his point was that it was in that relaxation that healing happened. And how do you relax in a posture if you are um, trying to hold on for dear life because you're, you're, you're arching back and your balance is really off center, right? So, and what, what really, what do you need to, what needs to happen as you're holding back? Yes, you're stretching the spine, but you want to create that tension in the sternum, right? That pull in the sternum, you create the pull and then you relax. So that pull is created, but you're still relaxed. When you're bringing the chin to the chest in Parvatasana, you would say, well, I'm, I'm kind of creating an unrelaxed position, right? But if you notice, when you're bringing the chin to the chest, you're putting pressure on the thyroid, but you're also, in doing that, the body goes toward the back, naturally. So you're creating this, this mountain naturally by placing certain things in certain ways, meaning the chin to the chest, bringing the heels down as close to the ground, but not necessarily, but shifting that weight back. All those things come into position, right? So it's not that anybody else is doing it wrong. It's just other people have different ways of doing it. And um, the way I'm teaching it now is for therapeutic purposes. And he saw Surya Namaskar as a very therapeutic set of asanas. And, and it is done properly, it's beautiful. Um, that's why I swear by it. <laughs> because it brought me out of this horrible disease that I just thought was never going to happen and so as the rhythm of my body started coming into sync uh things started happening you know so um so yeah and I hope that answers your question yeah thank you yeah but down dog and Sudan Namaskar are basically the same thing it's just the American word for it or the English word for it okay any other questions? Okay. Nina? When you are in Parvat Asana and then you go down, does the head stay straight up or down? What do you mean when you go down? When you're in the posture? Yeah, then you have to come down on your knees. Yes. Oh, no, you bring the head up. As you're coming down, the head comes up. Here, let me but show back you. Back or That's straight? A question. That's a really good question. So you're here. Your chin is to your chest, your back, everything is relaxed, in theory, right? Chin is here. As I'm coming out of it, I'm going to untuck my chin first, okay? Thank you for asking that, Nina. So you untuck the chin first and then come down. You don't bring the head up, you bring it into a straight neutral position, okay? And Thank you. Yeah, good question. Thank you. I don't think I covered that when I was going through it. <clears throat> Well, I was just noticing that because um, I was 
going a little, trying to put a few things together that you've taught us. And um, the next move that you go into stretches your neck, your thyroid back the other way. So I never realized that when you're tucking to your chin, mm -hmm. you know, and then the next move you, you, you stretch the other way. So um, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I had never really done the, you know, tucking, tucking my, um, you know, it's like people have said, you know, look at your belly button or, you know, um, but have, have not explained, you know, sort of why, you know, that you're compressing your, your thyroid at that point. So, um, so it, it's making more sense as we tie these things together, <laughs> but I know you're not doing that quite yet. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but I, I appreciate you skipping forward because it's exactly it. That's, you know, and that's the beauty of Surya Namaskar. The, the back stretches back and it stretches forward. Right. The neck stretches back and it stretches forward. You know, you've got this constant back and forth. And that's why we call it a dance, right? You're dancing back, you're dancing forward. You're letting the body stretch and move through that. You're waking up the nervous system. You're waking up the endocrine system, the circulatory system, the lymphatic system. All of it is being awakened with Surya Namaskar. And so what, what does that mean? We're talking about heart disease. We're talking about diabetes. We're talking about MS. All these things, all these systems that are out of balance start coming back into balance. And when we bring it all together, yeah, you'll have that movement. And then you incorporate the breath mm -hmm. and then you incorporate the focus aware. I've been trying to kind of show you with each posture, the focus, but you start moving the focus through the body. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you don't even need to think about it because mm -hmm. that's where your focus will go naturally as you're flowing through the body will tell you where you need to go. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys go. It's 916. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. It's, it's, um, my my pleasure to talk to you anytime. So if you have any questions, let me know. And um, practice. I know. I don't mean to give you homework, but practice and keep them separately. You know, do the first one, even if it's just one minute each of them, practice. Because I think you're going to be amazed by the difference it's going to make. Make the practice daily before you eat, not on a full belly. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a long practice. And I'm not going to ask you whether you do or not, because I don't want to put you on the spot, but do it because you'll be doing yourself a huge favor, huge. You're going to reap such benefits from it that I can't even explain because um, the body responds. You're tuning in and it's getting into rhythm while you're doing it. So, okay, another question. Sure. Um, when you say practice, now practice putting the moves together or practice just this one move? Just yes. this one move. Just this one move. Yes. yes. <laughs> See, here's the thing. You have to get to know each one of them very well. Otherwise, you're going back to what you already knew. Are you following what I'm saying? So I want you to know each one of the postures intimately, like you become that posture. Um, and you know, if, if more than two minutes is too much for you, then do the two minutes. But what you're, I think what you're gonna find is once you start settling in that posture, and once you start getting to know it, you're going to wanna sit with it longer. Now, some of them are easier to sit with than others. Like Pranamasana is so much more easily sat with than mm -hmm. Parvatasana, right? I mean, that's obvious. But, mm -hmm. um, and again, if you have high blood pressure, please don't sit with it for very long. But as you go in and out of it, you know, you get on your knees and you go back into it. That movement, you'll start feeling, you'll start noticing, you'll start, you know, day after day, after a week, it'll be, 
wow, that's why, or this is, or in Priti, and in your case, you'll say, oh my goodness, yeah, that's why they were feeling heavy. Um, you know, the, the answers will come. You won't even need to ask me because the answers will come because you've been practicing. And again, doesn't have to be an hour practice. Yeah. A couple minutes each one. Separately though, don't string them together yet. Please don't string them together yet. I want you to get to know each one of them. And then when we string them together, you'll feel the power of them. And um, it'll probably, if you've been practicing, and maybe even if you're not practicing, if, if, if it comes for you, you'll feel the power of it. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty incredible. I mean, I wouldn't be here teaching this if I didn't think that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah. So no, do not string them together yet. Pick <laughs> other asanas to do. Don't do Suri Namaskar right now. <laughs> But thank you. Thank you for being um... very nice, Margie. It's always the experience counts. Your experience is what you are giving us. And that's great. Yeah. I'll never teach you something that I haven't done. Never. So just know everything you, I teach you, it's because I've done it. Um, sometimes good and sometimes not so good, right? But I've done it. <laughs> but Surya Namaskar was very good. So I have to share that one. Um, okay. Thank you, Margie. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank you for being Margie. with me today. Thank you, Margie. Mm -hmm. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Margie. Thank Have you. Very much. Have Thank a you. good good day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. You tomorrow. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Namaste. And I think somebody wanted me to say, but I don't think she's here. Thank How you, Margie. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.